All right, everybody, welcome. It is time to go over the two maps once again for the new season and get an in-depth review. And we're gonna start with Barnacle and Dime. Subscribe if you enjoy. So as a whole, this map is really weird. It feels kind of like Albacore is what I've seen it compared to, but without the left side at all. And that's somewhat there, but the terrain on this map is way better. For example, this spawn area has a lot of cover and varied ways to retake, and mainly the map has this right side, and by the way, I'll get this out of the way. Why is this part of the block only on Ink Bowl? You just, but you put Squid Roll in the game, and you... <sighs> anyway, so this map is very similar to the new ones we've gone with Brian and Umami, where like, there's this left side route that's kind of like a mini flank, not really that favors short range weapons. And then there's a right side route that favors long range weapons as the main alternate to get out of your spawn. Like that same structure is there, but it's way better here. This right route is really easy to use and it has a very valuable vantage point that drops you kind of into the main aggressive defensive position. It's way better. And on the left side, this wall of cover is really useful for short range stuff like blasters, splatanas, rollers, buckets, or even shooters just trying to move through here quickly all have quite a lot of cover they can use. And I also think mid is fairly fun to fight in. This kind of like weird block structure is pretty interesting. And as a whole, I think the map actually does feel pretty good to fight on. It would have been nice if there was a bit more of a wide route. Like if you could go from all the way back there to like here and come out like behind this area, I think this would be such a good stage, but you know, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet, but the base layout is pretty good. Let's talk about it in the ranked modes. So tower control features a few changes. To start with a positive one, and this is here for a few modes, you have this defending sponge, which is very useful, honestly, to get back on. But the main change is definitely the right side of this mode, as not only does the tower go here, but this is kind of like a weird uninkable, and this platform is way smaller with an ink rail. And the ink rail is nice. I wish the ink rail was kind of here all the time, and it also allows this jump here, which is pretty cool. However, this kind of has some downsides. So the tower path on this mode is really boring. This first checkpoint is very annoying to contest if attackers push up here, as there's no real great defensive spot to be able to contest it, so that's already awkward. The second checkpoint is definitely the most balanced. However, it's this part where the map starts to break. They try to take it away from the middle of the map, which is good, but once the tower gets here, I just want you guys to look at the vantage point you have from this area as an attacking team. Like, you have the high ground over the defenders. At least there's no checkpoint here, but like, attackers are on the low ground, even with this little vantage point, and they have to go across uninkable terrain. Like, once the objective gets here, it feels miserable. I think this spawn area really needed expansions around this side to work with the tower here. Without it, it's just extremely awkward. And attackers even get to get up here, which defenders can't even go to. It's like, yeah, it kind of breaks there. Nowhere near as bad as I initially thought this would be in this mode, but definitely, like, once you get past the 30 points, the map becomes very bad. Uh, so Rainmaker has some similar problems. The first checkpoint isn't as close as on some of the other new maps we've gotten, but this is still just way too close. I don't know why they didn't have, like, one checkpoint here and another one down here and had a split checkpoint. That could have been more interesting. At least this one's, like, kind of close to this area, but yeah, it ain't great. From here, it does actually split into two, three routes if you count this box jump. This right route is fine for breakaways. It's actually decently fast, so I like it, but the left route has the same problem as tower where, yeah, defenders just go here and shoot, and how do you get here with the uninkable, with, like, you just spam Rainmaker shots, like, right here. It's nearly impossible to approach it, and this area takes really long to get through. It's just, it still feels really bad here as well. And you can just go on this high ground like pretty much the whole way through. Again, the right side of the spawn really needed some expansions for these kind of modes, and it really doesn't work. It feels super attacker favored. It's not as bad as tower control since you don't have the special advantage, but yeah, this is like a problem. So I would say this map also doesn't feel great in Rainmaker and doesn't feel as good in the first half, but not as bad in the second half. So, Clan Blitz is already a lot better. This sponge comes back, the basket placement is pretty much perfect with this lower area that creates some risk, and there is still an uninkable glass here, but now there's this area, which is a little bit different, and this is much better for defenders. Like, you can kind of try and go up here, 
And from this area, you can poke out attackers pretty easily. Like, they still have some advantages, like this ledge. But it is much easier to take this area. It still features the kind of little bit of reduced right side, but this is fine. Like, much better for defenders to get through. This part of the map doesn't feel anywhere near as bad. And I really like where the clan basket placement is. Like, it creates this kind of risk reward where, like, attackers are kind of putting themselves on lower ground than they've entered in from, kind of like in this pit, to be able to score. And I think that's really interesting. You can score normals from back here, but besides that, like, I think it's really good, and that's kind of a minuscule problem on the grand scheme of things. It's also, like, large enough of a clan blitz map to where you won't stop a push and then immediately be able to get another of your own. I think this is actually an extremely fun clan blitz map, one of the best in this, and I, I'd really like to play this in tournaments. It looks really fun. And finally, that leaves us with zones, which doesn't have too much new. The sponge is gone here for absolutely no reason. The defending part is pretty much the same as it was in clan blitz, just that this block stuff is back. But now we are back to this old right side area that is unfortunately missing the rail, but does have more kind of ground here in general. So I do really like that, and yeah, the zone's placement is fine. It's not too small, it's not too big, and the rest of the map is pretty much the same as it's been before. So yeah, definitely a map that works very well in zones and clans. TC Rain aren't even as bad as I thought, but I definitely think those are not modes that should be played in like tournament map lists if we're doing some like smaller map list. It's definitely not worth it, but I love to see zones and clans here. I think the map feels fairly fun to fight on. It's a real shame there wasn't some wide side route around this area like I mentioned earlier, because with that it could have been like one of the best maps in the series. And it's nice to see some improvements here, so yeah. Barnacle and Dime ain't too bad. Now we're here on Humpback, where one of the most impactful changes in all modes is this thing you'll barely use. At least it's cool. Not as fun as the boat on Manta, though. That will never be top. Um, this is one of the few maps where the Turf War layout is actually relevant to talk about instead of being copy-paste from zones, because there is this kind of, like, connecting thing. So you can go all the way wide on both sides, and honestly... It's always made Humpback a really fun turf war map. Like, I'm not really someone who enjoys turf much, mainly because the competitive metas for it are awful, and probably always will be, but that's a subject for another time. But honestly, the unique layout and kind of, like, open side routes are really nice, and I think it's especially nice in this game, since most maps don't have these. Like, look how far these sides are on the map scale. Like, it's really far apart and hard to watch both, and I think it makes it flow pretty well in turf war. Now, the map does have some problems, and to talk about those, let's go to zones. So, Zone's Humpback was infamous in Splatoon 2 for being displacement special spam. Like, obviously, double missiles very common at the end of the game, Stingray and Rainmaker, and even double Booyah Bomb with Arrow Spray was common there at one point. So, what happened? Why does this map have such awful metas on it? Well, let's see. If you're directly in the middle of the map, displacement specials will force you onto the low ground. If you want to back up any further, you can go over... Or maybe over, uh, okay, um... Maybe, no. Oh, over there! Ah, oh, yes, you go here and you jump onto a grate, and then you jump here, and then ju you jump here in the open, and then you go over here and... Wow! That's the only way back, huh? And it's really bad. Oh. Oh, but at least when I'm here, I could go all the way back, right? Oh, oh no, don't tell me. No! Hey, how do I... Can I... Hey, what... I- I have to do this? Yeah, so it's got the bowl problem where when you're in one area of the map, if you drop in, it's a one way and you can't go back. And if you want to go backward, well, yeah, you can't go back. That's why displacement has always been strong here, and unfortunately, they didn't fix it. Also, I'm gonna say this right now, this could have been a cool zip and sprinkler map by throwing it on these lights like you could in Splatoon 2, and now... You can't! You can't zip that either. So yeah, they, they nerfed Sprinkler on this map and Zipcaster before it even came out, which is just hilarious. Like, this has got to be one of the weakest Zipcaster maps. There's so few spots in the middle. Like, why? That's so weird. Well, anyway, random note aside, this is pretty much the same as it was in Splatoon 2. The specials on this map are a little less bad for it. Like, Missiles has the cooldown nerf, and Booyah isn't as prevalent, and Tri-Strike isn't as strong, but it definitely still has the same problems. 
We'll have to see if it actually flows that way, but it feels a little bit better in this game, but still pretty bad in zones. Humpback Tower is also pretty much unchanged. There's still this kind of uninkable block there that's kind of new, but the tower path is pretty much the same as it was, which is okay. This jump it allows for attackers is cool to get across to the right side. However, it does make lockouts from this part of the map extremely easy to set up, and the tower can be very annoying to contest as it dips under this trench area. As you can see, a lot of cover, very difficult for defenders to do anything about it, and just in general, it's one of those maps that feels very attacking favored, and because tower control has the special advantage for attackers, that just really doesn't feel great. There's also not a lot of routes to back up from. Like, the rail is there, but it's kind of just a flank route. This block is okay, but you're still kind of in the middle of everything. It's a little bit better since you can do this now compared to Splatoon 2, but yeah, this map doesn't really work great for TC either. Now, Humpback Rainmaker was bad in Splatoon 2, but it was mostly because of Ray. So already that not being in the game is great for this map, but we also have a few changes. This right checkpoint area, well, now has the checkpoint, and honestly, that gives it a bit more variance in the terrain it has. However, the cooler change is on the left side of the route, which works both with this path and with using the ink rail, but instead of being a wall you would climb up like it was in Splatoon 2, instead, you now have a checkpoint jump to new area on the left side, with this part that's been widened, with a new balloon for attackers and this bit of cover for defenders, as well as this area being extended and having a sponge for defenders. Let's go! Now that's some positive changes! This map already had some advantages in the fact that being able to back up here from the checkpoint was nice, but now also having a sponge makes it even easier for defenders to get back into their base, and yeah, that means the bull problem is pretty alleviated, especially considering, you know, we have this open one side and open other side route. It still would've been nice if defenders could get back up here from some kind of sponge, but honestly, this has felt really fun thus far, and I've enjoyed the changes to it quite a lot. Humpback Rainmaker is better than ever. So, I've been pretty certain about my opinions on every map mode thus far. Humpback Clams? I'm kinda not sure. Now, in Splatoon 2, this wasn't really a great map mode, mainly because it was very attacker favored again, it was very difficult to contest under this basket, but that's changed a bit. We have the sponge to go back from, much more impactful without the Rainmaker pedestal there. We have this bit of extra cover. On top of that, rather than a wall being there, instead there is this block that you have to jump up, which is much more exposed, which is a good thing since this is usually attacker favored. So they can still get up here, but it's much easier to stop, especially paired with this new ground. On top of that, I think this pillow bit they added here is kind of nice, and yeah, I enjoy it. You can still use this rail route to get around, and so far it's been fun. I have to do a little more testing to see if it's actually really good, but it's definitely at the very least okay, and I think it has potential to be a very fun map mode. Once again, man, it's always Clamblitz that stays winning in these. This is always the mode where map modes end up getting improved the most, and it's really cool to see, so... I think Humpback could be played here alongside Rainmaker, and I'm pretty excited for that, so that's pretty cool. Well, with that all being said, I think this ended up a lot better than I thought. Now, yeah, Humpback wasn't the best map to port, and Barnacle still has the usual Splatoon 3 map problems, but all things considered, these were a lot better than I thought, and honestly, I've had some fun on them. They have their problems, but honestly, they have a good bit of strengths too, so... Yeah, I guess we'll take this one. Definitely better than I thought, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing on it more. Thanks for watching.